Swimsuit? Check. Sunscreen? Check. Phone charger? Check. Don't forget to pack the 5-Hour Energy. It fits great in a pocket or carry-on, and the alert feeling will help you arrive ready for anything. Now get 20% off when you use code 5HETRAVEL at 5HourEnergy.com. Expires April 30th. One-time use only. Not valid with other discounts. Remember, visit 5HourEnergy.com and use code 5HETRAVEL to save 20%. Have you found the keys to unlock your best trip? On a Trafalgar tour, you unlock more than just the world. We give you the key to let down your walls and make lifelong friends. The key to discovering hidden talents and fresh perspectives. From one-of-a-kind experiences to iconic destinations, Trafalgar gives you the keys to unlock your best self. Discover more at trafalgar.com slash unlock. That's T-R-A-F-A-L-G-A-R dot com slash unlock. Tour differently ebay motors is here for the ride elbow grease and a whole lot of love transformed 100,000 miles and a body full of rust into a drive entirely its own led headlights spoilers whatever you need ebay motors has it at affordable prices and with ebay guaranteed fit it's guaranteed to fit your ride every time keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply Hi there, I am Johnny Lieberman. And I'm Ed Lowe. And we are coming to you from Motor Trend with our new podcast, The Inevitable, back for another season. We have a great group of guests for you this time out, including the one and only Mr. Smoking Tire, Matt Farah. The middle linebacker from the Minnesota Vikings, Eric Kendricks. With the father and son team behind the craziest new hypercar to hit the market, Kevin and Luke Zinger. As well as one of the world's first EV tuners, John Peck from T Sport Line. We've got a couple of award-winning chefs between these two gentlemen. They have two Michelin stars. Michael Simersky has two. Sang Young has zero, but they're in here as guests. And Comedian extraordinaire Gabriel Iglesias, who you might know better as Fluffy. And we got all these guests and more on this season of Motor Trends, The Inevitable. And you can listen to us on Podcast One, wherever you get your podcast, or choose to watch us on YouTube. Hey guys, welcome to CarCast. Uh, we have a great show. Our good friends Mike and Jim Ring, the Ring Brothers, are going to be uh, giving us a little preview of what they're going to be bringing to SEMA and what's going on in their garage. And we took a little trip down to HRE Wheels as well. So uh, we'll get into that. But first, here's Geico. Would you love to save money on insurance? Well, of course. Who doesn't love a good deal? Well, when it comes to great rates on insurance for everything, GEICO can help. Insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, RV, even homeowners, condo, and renters coverage. Save even more with a special discount when you bundle coverages. Plus, add the easy-to-use GEICO mobile app and 24-hour roadside assistance, and the switch to GEICO becomes a no-brainer. Switch today and see how you can save. Simply go to GEICO.com to get a rate quote or contact your local agent. Have you found the keys to unlock your best trip? On a Trafalgar tour, you unlock more than just the world. We give you the key to let down your walls and make lifelong friends. The key to discovering hidden talents and fresh perspectives. From one-of-a-kind experiences to iconic destinations, Trafalgar gives you the keys to unlock your best self. Discover more at trafalgar.com slash unlock. That's T-R-A-F-A-L-G-A-R dot com slash unlock. Tour differently. Hey guys, welcome to CarCast. I'm Matt, the moderator. DeAndre here with Bill Goldberg. Oh man. Fourth cup of coffee. Fourth cup of coffee. Uh, I wanted to, to check in with you real quick on the on the garage. What was What's the verdict on the bar going? <laughs> okay, so you're just banging your head against the table. Just go, the bar going through the, the glass portion. It just is what it is for fixed, now? Fixed. Oh, that's 10 issues ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, completely fixed. No, no, uh, no bars going through the the glass. No, uh, uh-uh. that was we, it. Just compared- was it just like they're like, okay, it's fine. Just remove it. Like it just, it doesn't. Yeah, ruin- it was fine. It, it was. I mean, they they hadn't mounted them there there yet, but since they're twenty four foot doors and it's such a they're such a so expansive, uh, it was required for hurricane winds right right i don't foresee getting hurricane winds up here so we didn't have to install them thankfully 
and next year we'll get a hurricane in Texas. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, do you have them? So if you if you yes. really get nervous, you can go in there and you know Absolutely. grab a ladder and just do it. Like it's a pain in the ass, but you can do it. I guess yes. the point was you said they were 150 mile an hour wind rated. Removing the bars just brings it to oh, whatever 130, 120, it's right? Really it, it it doesn't tweak the whole setup. It can't roll up correctly. It wasn't like no, an all or none. It was just no. Right. So it's an added measure of safety by having them there. So you can go back and add them if you want to. So, yeah. OK, that's fine. I mean, I mean, I, I agree. I, I think that was a fine compromise. If you could store that stuff and if you really feel like you need it, uh, then then do it. Um, you know, and and even on the lower glass areas, you know, maybe just added security. If you something came up, you're going out of town, you're filming in L.A. for three months. Oh, yeah. You could put the bars in from the backside so nobody can kick in the glass and climb through, right? Like none of that. Well, they got I mean, hit by the longhorns in the 130 pound <laughs> Rottweiler. Yeah, I was going to say there's a Rottweiler. And Libra and everybody else. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I would definitely, I mean, if a big storm came in, I'd put them on the lower, the lower panel for sure. But uh, I mean, it, it's uh, being overcautious, quite yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Really structure like that and my issue is that they bow a tiny bit when they're rolled up because they're just literally freaking gigantic yeah, yeah so i have to find out if that um, continues over time or if there's another bar that we need to put up the top but uh yeah that was a couple issues ago we're uh, putting h back in today ben pack all the ben pack uh equipment arrives tomorrow then ben pack shows up on monday and they'll be installing monday through thursday next week okay <laughs> And we got the mats for the uh, for the gym floor. Okay, uh, okay, two days ago, and the weights will be arriving a week from tomorrow. So yeah, shit's about to hit the fan. Yeah, <laughs> no yeah it's good, and it's, it's it's it. But the pace is good. The pace is like a little like sometimes it feels too fast. Sometimes it feels like a lot of shit is happening. But but it's better to have stuff happen. You know, if like, I don't wake up and there's 10 cars parked at the garage, I'm, I get really freaking antsy uh, <laughs> because there's so many different things that are going on at the same time. Well, you know, I mean, we've got electricians, plumbers, uh, Speedway, the erectors are two, two, two erector crews are out here, two plumbing crews, two electrician crews, and they all have their guys. So, I mean, it, it's it's a it's a shit show. Let's yeah. just say that. You yeah. Know, and, you know, I, and I got to continue to keep the sheep out of there. So <laughs> um, it, it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic daily, but it's, we're getting there, man. I mean, once you put the GC on notice by having everything delivered, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's time to, to make shit happen. It's so a, it's a pretty, pretty interesting learning experience. It's one that I will never go through again. As okay. Jumps up here. There yeah, he never, is. never again. It's absolutely nerve wracking. It just, it really is. I mean, quite honestly, it's going to be fantastic when it's done, but, you know, we ain't there yet. We're not there yet. We'll ask you the question again in 10 months, if you would ever but, do it again, if yeah. you would ever do it again, let it, yeah, let it settle so in, let you get, let it get it worked out, let you have a little fun in the garage. And then when you realize how worth it, it was, then we'll ask again, maybe you never want to do it again, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, and- yeah, that, that workbench has got. Uh, they're they're building the uh, the workbench as we speak. They're taking it up to Houston for Barrett Jackson. Mm-hmm. Be dropping off here, you know, at the house on the way back, and we'll be installing and filming. And yeah, it's just it's going to be a uh, revolving door of film crews going in and out of Goldberg's garage. But you know, it's it's a reality now. I mean, I went and all the cars are charged up. You know, uh, mm-hmm. got. Ex- extra uh, gas over there all the all the tires have been switched um so we're ready to rock man we're we're ready to go just need the freaking finish it. yeah yeah it's getting there uh so as you know i i took a little trip down to uh hre wheels um they're uh they're down south where you used to live in southern california and and um i promised them when we got the four lightning in we would take it down and let them sort of uh you know, climb around it and measure and do all kinds of stuff. And, and, uh, yeah, so I, uh, jumped in the truck, drove it on down, got a chance to play around with the Blue Cruise, the hands free 
feet free, you know, as close to an autopilot. I, I don't want to use that term, really. It's not quite that. Um, and it, it was interesting. It, it worked well. Uh, it wasn't perfect. It, and it did alert me to keep my hands on the wheel every now and then. Um, but the Blue Cruise is not like the Tesla system, right? The Tesla system mostly uses a lot of cameras. Uh, I don't know what other sensors. I don't want to pretend to know like what else Tesla is doing. But um, Ford system uses cameras outside the car, sensors and cameras or whatever outside the car to see what's in front of you and 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 all that. But it also only works on certain roads, mostly highways, freeways. Ford claims they have 130,000 miles of roads mapped, and it uses GPS as well. So if something is in the way of the camera, a glare, light, or something that's going on, uh, it may alert me and go, by the way, keep your hands on the wheel. Uh, it's not in hands-free mode, but it still does what it needs to do, and it uses the cameras and the GPS that when the road is turning, it's still turning. So when, when the system is on, it didn't say put your hands on the wheel because now you have to turn. It says put your hands on the wheel as an added level of attention, as level of safety, but it still turned and did whatever. And as I was getting into traffic, I mean, it turned, it stayed within the lines, it it accelerated, it it hit the brakes. And when a car got in front of me, this is L.A., right? So they don't signal, they dart in front of you pretty quickly. To, and then, you know, the car got on the brakes and you can, I mean, you definitely feel the tension of the brakes. If, if the car's in front of you at a distance, it eases into the brakes to slow you down. If he darts in front of you, it gets on the brakes pretty hard. You know, it's trying to maintain this safe distance. So uh, it was an interesting system. I could definitely see, like, you know, if I go down there again or one of those trips, like, it's it's good. Now, it also uses cameras inside the vehicle that look at me, that look at my face to make sure I'm pretty much paying attention. So I, if I'm eating a bowl of soup or on my phone <laughs> texting, it's like, it's, it's going to say, hey, you know, pay attention. It's not meant to be you know, wander off into the back seat and take a nap. It's not that, right? We're so far from that. That's not a real thing. You know, uh, that's wildly dangerous. That's not a real thing. But to be able to kind of like, you know, like I I pulled something like in a, in a forearm and I was able to drive and then I was able to kind of do some stretches here and do some stretches like this and, and move around a little bit. And I was like, all right, it's fine. It's a little interesting though because you're like, hey, this – Things kind of driving on its own, but it was good to uh, to give that a try. Uh, went down to HRE, and uh, and by the way, we have the Ring Brothers coming in uh, today, so they're going to be uh, uh, joining us uh, hopefully in a bit. So went down there, um, brought the truck in. Uh, everybody kind of came out to look at it. We brought it into the back and um, uh, took took a front wheel off, took a rear wheel off. Uh, measured it, um, bolt patterns, measured all the clearance underneath, and then took their their scanner. So you'll see I posted like an Instagram reel, and you'll see quickly he's spraying something, and it's just like a white powder because the the gun basically, the digital scanner um, – it has to pick up three dimensional. It it doesn't work well with highly reflective surfaces. So what he yeah. does is he sprays this kind of white powder, this matte material on, and it 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 flattens out basically the reflective surfaces, um, and uh, and allows them to scan it. So we're going to bring the Ring Brothers right in, and then um, and then I'll 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 continue. Um, and it's kind of interesting, and it actually goes pretty quick, and it allowed us to sort of map out uh, the the suspension components, um, everything, the upper and lower control arms, coil arms, uh, coil overs, allowed us to measure the distance between uh, the wheel and how much space we had. By the way, these wheels are only like, they're 23s, but they're like an eight and a half wide, and uh, you could probably get a nine, maybe nine and a half in there. Um, there's not a lot what of room. Is it a dunk? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I meant nine inch wide, not the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was an interesting process. It took it takes about an hour to go through it, but the interesting thing that came up is we weighed we weighed a wheel and tire setup. Uh hey guys, I, I have a 
Mike and Jim Ring are here as well. Uh, I was just talking about, I just drove down to HRE Wheels uh, and with the new Ford Lightning, the electric truck, and we scanned it and measured it for, for wheels so they can have that data. And, and, you know, they just, they digitally scan everything. So we have all the, the scans of the suspension components and stuff, and they measured it. And I got a bunch of photos that's going on in there because that truck has coilovers in the rear. It doesn't have leaf springs. And it's a dual motor, but it's one in the front and one in the rear. So it's all-wheel drive with two motors. Um, and it does have ride height sensors on it, which is interesting, but it's not adjustable ride height. So there's some pretty interesting there. But the wheel and tire was Eighty four and a half pounds, and then we were able to wow. to look up the specs on the tire itself, and I think it was, oh, I think it was forty pounds. So basically, the wheel, the, the wheel came in at forty five pounds, twenty three inch. Uh, I think it's like the TR one hundred seven wheels. They're seven spoke, really nice design. Uh, uh, handles a heavy load. It's a great looking wheel. We've seen it on F-150, six lug, and it's about 10 pounds lighter. Oh yeah. So, but, but you're talking about on the wheel, right? So the, the unsprung weight, um, 10 pounds lighter per corner. It'd be about 40 pounds weight. Now at, at 67, 6,800 pounds for the vehicle, you're like, what's 40 pounds? Who cares? But it's 40 pounds in the right area. It's, it's yeah. on the wheel. So, um, it's, I'm kind of interesting. The two things we look at on, on an EV are the aerodynamics and the weight. And the stock wheel is kind of blocked off, not a full like moon eyes disc wheel, but it's pretty blocked off. Uh, for aero and it doesn't stick out further than the body. Like if you if you did like a quarter inch spacer, you'd really start to affect the aerodynamics, right? Um, but if we went to the stock size and reduced it about ten pounds per wheel, I wonder if that will even if the arrow is a little worse, if that changes the acceleration probably more than it would change the range. But I wonder if it would change the range. So. I wonder, these, if they, I wonder if the uh, if they x each other out. Yeah. So all these fun experiments we want to try by swapping the wheels. And yes, as we get more into uh, EVs, HRE is I'm sure planning on new designs of wheels that might be a little more uh, aerodynamic. Right? How do you make it look cool? Signature HRE design, but something a little more aerodynamic. I was talking to to Patrick over there, the creative director, and um, I think he did some work with um, with Lucid. And you know, Lucid, we like those build the, the 500 mile range, but the really fast version with 400 and whatever 80 mile range or whatever it is has a different wheel. Just swapping the wheel from that really aerodynamic thin wheel with the you know with also the the less grip, right? It's meant to be a high mileage wheel or tire um, makes a huge, makes a significant difference on the lucid. So uh, yeah, we're going to play around with it. So my, my thought with HRE was it's all wheel drive. It already hooks up. This truck is zero to 60 in four seconds. It, it chirps the tires a little bit, um, but it still hooks up really good. Um, we'll lower it a little bit, which could improve the aerodynamics, but let's go to the same tire. The same wheel size and the same tire. So I want that exact tire, which is a heavy load rating, by the way, on a new set of wheels and see if we notice any real difference in the range or maybe even the performance uh, and and kind of go from there. But the whole process of scanning was was fantastic to see. Are you charging that with a diesel generator or using a gas generator? <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I, I go into my. I was just about to say, Matt, we're going from one end of the spectrum. Yeah, to I go into my warehouse every day and I ride the pedal, the boat, the bicycle, and it, and it starts to, you know, it starts to make the lights get a little brighter in the building. You're it the starts turbo. charging it a little bit. Yeah. Um, it, it's going to be interesting. I I did stop on the way home at a. DC fast charger, like in a Target parking lot. And and by the way, that machine, you plug it in, and I got 
I got 150 miles of range in 30 minutes, almost a half a battery in 30 minutes. But when you plug that machine in and you hear that thing kick on, you kind of want to put your hands over your nuts and take a few steps back because you feel like <laughs> it's, it's throwing off. It's throwing off something. Like, I don't know what it is. I'm like, I'm going to go. take your hands off your nuts all you want. Just drop <laughs> like, right on top of that freaking battery the whole time. I, I just kind of want to go hide in the Target building for a minute. I was like, something. Can we segue from this EV shit and get into real car stuff? <laughs> yeah, all right. That's um, uh, that's enough on there. Uh, Mike, Jim, uh, a pleasure having you guys back on the show. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm sure you guys are uh, getting busy for uh, – for a SEMA, probably, I don't know. I mean, every year somebody goes, hey, uh, this is a great SEMA build you guys brought. What are you going to do next year? And you're like, I don't know. We could take a year off. But then you show up with two cars. Yeah, right. You okay. show up with two cars, right? And then the next year they go, oh, what two cars are you going to bring next year? And you guys, I don't know. Maybe these take a lot of work. Maybe we won't be here next year. But unf- you guys, I don't know. Maybe you guys just work yourselves to the bone over there. But uh Tell us a little bit about what's going on in the shop these days. Well, I'll start. We're not doing anything electric, I can tell you that. So Jim can okay. take it from there. <laughs> we got a lot of Hemi's in here, but uh, nothing is electric. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably okay. We, you know, we we saw quite a few things electric at the SEMA show last year. And then um, when we came back here and started really talking about it on the podcast and showing pictures, people were like, eh. Was, that's yeah i gotta be honest that's me there wasn't like a lot of love for it so you know yeah we haven't uh we haven't done that. Since, since 2019 so it's been it's been a long time and you know obviously a lot of things changed without the the big boys being there ford and gm and so it should be interesting you know we weren't there last year i don't know if bill or if you guys were there yeah i was uh, didn't make it um you know, so we we ended up we've got four cars coming out there this year, which is a tremendous <laughs> amount. Wow! Um, yeah, they're four vehicles, I should say. They're not all cars, but um, that's a lot for us. But the shop's full. We've got a lot of interesting projects going on. We've got a seventy-one Austin Martin. We've got a sixty-one Rolls Royce. Uh, we've got Chargers, wow. sixty-nine Chargers, uh, seventy Cuda. Uh, yeah, Camaros, Mustangs, Blazers, Grand Nationals, uh, a lot. So, the only thing you guys need to figure out, which you probably haven't yet, is how to clone yourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm interested. Uh, Aston Martin, Rolls Royce, uh, the bills you guys do on those, the stuff that you're planning for that. Um, what power plant would you use on those vehicles? Do you tr- stick to something that's, you know, or do you LS swap everything? <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, well, you know, you can get crucified for doing that, but the answer is on the Rolls Royce, it is an LS. So, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, full chassis. It's just a, he's got all the normal Rolls Royces. He wants something that's, you know, a little, a little more radical. So, It'll be fun for them. It's kind of an exciting project. You know, we're not really touching the body yeah, uh, a whole lot. It's even the wheels almost look as if they were stock, but um, it'll be, it'll be a fun car. It's kind of exciting. It's, I'll tell you, it's nice to do something different. Yeah. It's a, it's an LT five with a 10 speed automatic. And we even bought like a uh, CTS V exhaust system with the four cats and, you know, we're changing it around a lot, but we want it to be quiet, but yet opens up with when you floor it, the dumps open and, you know, it should be a kind of a sleeper. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a big car. What year did you say it was? 61. Okay. Uh, it's it's the silver cloud. It's a big car. It's uh, big, right? We took the, we took the separator pod out of it because the, the gentleman that owns it's a pretty good sized guy. And, <laughs> I think, like Mike always said, them things were driven by jockeys or something because all the room was in the back. There was no room in the front of them things. Yeah, you're right. It's definitely a chauffeured car, not really a driver's car, which is interesting because nowadays the Rolls Royce is kind of a driver's car as well. They really want that experience to to change. (laughs) I don't know if you've ever driven one of them new Rolls Royces, but Bob, the guy we're building the car for, let me drive his a new one. 
it's the most amazing vehicle I've ever been in in my life to drive it. Like, and I'm serious. I've driven a lot of different vehicles, but it was, I said it was like being held in your mother's arms. Yeah. It was just unbelievable. They have what they call the magic carpet ride. That's their, their suspension ride. And, and yes, we've had the opportunity to drive pretty much all of them in their, in their lineup from the Cullinan SUV, the Wraith, uh, the Ghost. Um, uh, Adam Crone and I took one to Monterey Car Week and back and, and, you know, when we got it, I told Adam, hey, we're taking the Rolls Royce. And he's like, ah, oh, I don't know if that's kind of our image. I go, hey, let's just do it. It'll be fun. And we did the trip, and he was like, I get it now. He's like, I get it. This thing is absolutely amazing to drive. It's, it's I mean, and, you know, Sonny's in the back, and, you know, and – at one point, I don't know, we're just saying, like, let's just stretch its legs and see what it does. We're like, we're doing 110 or something, and, you know, everyone's sleeping in the car. They couldn't tell the difference. And the technology in it is is interesting. When when um, I think when the uh, BMW Williams F1 team retired, they took the engineers from the F1 team, and they moved them over to Rolls-Royce, and they came up with some pretty cool stuff. So when you're driving that Ghost, it uses GPS to get – the topography of the land in he- ahead of you and the the transmission prepares itself ahead of time in anticipation of like going up or down a hill right so it's it's already loading itself getting ready you know uh get, getting itself in fighting stance really cool stuff i i we drove the wraith and i got this fantastic video uh, uh chris was with me chris took the video of the wraith where we uh it's V12, I don't know, 600 pound feet of torque. So we just power braked it into this crazy burnout in the, in the, in the, in the thing. And then, uh, and then when we went to go try it again, all this stuff came up on the dash and it said, it said, you, we're not going to let you do that again, basically is what it would say, because <laughs> the transmission has reached a temperature that we feel like is inappropriate. So go ahead and take a break. And, uh, <laughs> wow. Kind of like your mom talking to you. Yeah, right. I mean, it was it was it seemed it seemed very polite. And then I sent the video to uh, to Rolls Royce. I was like, "Thanks for the wraith. Here's the burnout." They're like, "Oh, jeez." <laughs> um, they right. they were the ones that hit that button to to tell you to the, not to do it. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised they didn't call me on the phone. We we know what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. please stop doing that for now. Um, so tell us about the other car. What are you going to do for the power plant in the other car? Well, the it's a DBS, a 71, and we're putting, a, you know, Ford owned them for a while. And, you know, the owner kind of wanted to run a Mercedes. And I know Troy tried doing that once. And, yeah, you know, when you start mixing the transmission and the weight, it it's a lot. It's over our head, to be honest. And we don't feel comfortable getting in something where it bank bankrupts us trying to make it work you know so mm-hmm. we're going to run a twin turbo coyote in it and i don't know if you know those dbs's we'd never done one i know uh, matt you've asked this years ago when you're with adam about yeah. what we'd like to do and we always said a european car yeah and, uh, um, so it's fun but we're going to twin turbo it but the engine bay in that thing is massive it is it's yeah. got a v8 now but it's we want a low profile, you know, the turbo's sitting up front. Jim's not real hip on it yet, but he's mm-hmm. he's 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 getting he's getting better. You coming around on this, Jim? Well, I'll tell you what, building anything and then fighting it to get down the road to run scares the shit out of me. So right. I don't yeah. like being a guinea pig. I like to know do stuff that's proven that I know we can turn the key and it'll run and have the guy enjoy it for years to come. But they say they've got them figured out, so we'll find out, I guess, won't we? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I mean, uh, it's funny you mentioned that because I'm I have a 2021 Mustang Mach One that we're bringing to the SEMA show with the first emissions legal, hopefully, uh, uh, twin turbo kit for the Coyote. Nice, um, like a very yeah, very cool kit. So to get who's doing the turbos. Uh, Hellion Turbo, uh, John Urist is doing it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah and, that's what we're looking at too. Yep. Yeah, and he's he's huge background in in racing uh, and drag racing those cars. He's been building. Uh, Bill knows him as well. Um, he's been doing it for the F one fifties, 
all the Dodge Hemi engines on the Coyote engines. Just a very, very smart guy. Did a lot of work on this. Worked a lot with SEMA Garage on uh, on getting this thing to to pass emissions. And not a huge shop. This isn't you know a hundred employees and sixty million dollars. This is this is you know like three guys. This is a, a, a small operation. So um, we're very excited about that and uh, to bring that out there. Um, He's he's good, and it mounts those turbos down low after the catalytic converters, which pr- probably would allow you guys some space to really clean up the engine compartment. If you could fit the Coyote in, you don't have to jam these turbos in there right up next and in, in front of the motor on the sides. You can mount this down low, like next to the bell bell housing. Honestly, the only reason we want them in there, or Mike wants them in there, is just for the look. For the look, yeah. Yeah, now he's got a high mount kit as well. I don't know what that does for uh, emissions, but that might not be the case for a car this we, old. We're in Wisconsin. We're not an electric country. Up yeah, here. yeah, you know, right. We can still enjoy <laughs> cars with gasoline and you know, furnace, furnace oil, and we don't have a lot of windmills yet. It's okay. We've got it's gas okay. Powered trimmers for our yards. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I'm sure our governor Gavin Newsom doesn't even know where Wisconsin is. Uh, <laughs> thank right? God we know who he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank God he doesn't know where Hopefully it is. Hopefully he doesn't know where Texas is. Either. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Goldberg, are you going to be at SEMA? Yeah, sir. I'm back. Awesome. Good. So, Last to, so, time... to, so to sweeten the pot a little bit, tell us a little bit about what you're bringing to SEMA, because I'm excited just to see what you guys are bringing. Well, I got I to just step in. Bill, last time I saw you or talked to you, you were trying to get the hell out of Saudi. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was a while ago. And that, was, that was a number of Saudi trips ago. Yeah, you were yeah, trying to get out of there and find your car. What a debacle. What a debacle. <laughs> it I took mean, a long time to get that car back, but Bill's gone back <laughs> now with WWE a few times. Yeah, the, I've, know been, ours? I've been back four times since that uh, illustrious trip that we went on. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and none of it car related, but it, I mean, it was, it, it was quite smooth. It was the WWE going and we did our events. But, uh, yeah, what a debacle that was. I don't think I'll be doing that one ever again. Wow. You, you know, ours were two of the cars that got super damaged there, like really bad. So, yeah, we're, 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 we're glad to be home, too, and looking forward to SEMA this year. But, yeah, so Jim told you we're, we're bringing a few cars this year. One is a 69 Mustang that's pretty cut up. I mean, I'm excited for people to see it. Okay. It's uh it's a it's a neat car. I kind of don't want to give you too much. Yeah, that's all right. All right, go on to the next one. What else you bring, Jim? Uh, <laughs> kind of a wild uh, seventy one K five Blazer. It's it's. Uh, Would you a- stop with the Blazer stuff because yeah. you make me want to send you mine? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's got more of a three runner style chassis under it, but it's it's pretty wild. I think people will like it. Um, and then a uh, another a full carbon '69 Camaro mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming, and then a uh, a pretty wild uh, '48 pickup. Oh, right. yeah, that'll be cool. <laughs> I like the way you said that. Yeah, you're gonna. I think people are gonna shit when they see this one. <laughs> good, They're good. It's That's by far, it's by far the craziest thing we've ever done by tenfold. So, well, that and you, know, you guys aren't excited to go to see well if you're not if you and matt aren't doing anything you can pull the cover off for us that'd be cool <laughs> i'm there well I'm yeah there. let us know when that's happening we'd love to come by either way we'll catch up with you guys at sema um you know the camaros the camaros and mustangs you guys have done quite a few and uh this mustang convertible caged i believe is it's called um uh, I I saw I saw the photos on it, read the specs on it, and if you guys don't know, it's a you know it's a Gen One Mustang convertible. It's absolutely gorgeous, um, but a, a little different in that this was you you kept a lot of things sort of stock looking as opposed to I mean I've always loved what you guys have done, especially on the interiors, uh, but this was a chance to say well. How do we keep it sort of stock looking, but also touch everything, right? 
Yeah, so, that's exactly what that car was. It was there was nothing that uh, wasn't touched on the car. Although to walk by, it, you'd think it was a bone stock sixty four and a half convertible, but. Um, he drives the thing like it's a rental car. I mean, <laughs> he, he's got, he had the car for what, nine weeks now. He picked it up at our shop Yeah, and it's got 7,000 miles on it. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. I mean, he does not shut it up. Rain, sleet, snow, it don't matter. He, he, uh, he drives that thing. He's got a piece of property in Iowa, a big deer camp, uh, place down there, a couple thousand acres, all dirt roads. He takes the son bitch right through there. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> The only thing we missed on it is we didn't put all-wheel drive in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'll bring it back at some point and be like, hey, I got an idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, tell us a little bit more about that car because that was kind of a, a, an interesting build. Um, wh- whose idea was it to go this direction, this sort of stock-looking his, direction? His. He, the owner. He 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 liked that car. His He remembers as a kid his dad had that same car. And uh, he had every intention of driving. I mean, he literally sent me a video of him driving it in Wisconsin in a complete washout downpour down the interstate (laughs) at 90 miles an hour. And you could see water bubbles coming through the rubber gasket on the front windshield on the like the driver's side. He's like, what am I going to do about this? I'm like, dude, them cars, they were, (laughs) they leaked water when you bought them. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean, but you know, we didn't re-engineer the convertible top or any of that, obviously. But it that car was not meant to do 100 miles an hour in a hurricane. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, what do you want to do about it? Get an F250. That's what you do. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, the guy he said another wow. comment he made was, uh, um, "When I'm doing 100, it only shows 90 on the speedometer." I'm like. <laughs> I want to meet this guy. Yeah. 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 He, I've never seen anybody beat a car like this underneath. It's just trashed. We just <laughs> cleaned it up again and I've just never seen anything like it. Golf club marks in the back. The trunk's all nice, but just beat the shit. Hey, before so, we go on any, any further, uh, I, I'm just going to say again, and I'm not paid to do this by any stretch of imagination. But any time and every time I look at y'all's work, no matter what kind of vehicle it is, it's like looking at Van Gogh's stuff. I mean, it's it's absolutely it's absolutely beautiful. There are works of art, and every single detail that you guys do is unmatched out in the the, the market right now. I, I don't think anybody touches what you guys do. It's always been that way. Um, I just, as an enthusiast, man, I, I, I can't thank you enough for doing what you do. It's just, it's, it's well, so cool. We appreciate that. That means a lot coming from you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yes, sir. You, you guys see see a lot of stuff, and I know you don't have to say that, but it, it's really nice to hear. We, you know, I just turned 60 a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, I'm just, people go, when are you going to retire? I'm like, when I fall over in the shop, because what would you do if you were retired? I'd do what I'm doing. So we're just yeah. lucky. It's kind of scary too. Cause if you put us together, we're almost 120. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't put me in there. We'll be 200. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I mean, we want to talk, but this truck, I know we're not supposed to say a lot, but I'm telling you what this truck, is gonna, I think it's going to whack them. I mean, I hate to brag, and I don't want to brag, but... Just tell us, the, tell us the power plant. You don't have to tell us anything else, and that'll get people as excited as hell. Believe, believe it or not, it's another LS, but it's a <laughs> tall deck, 510 cubic inches, makes 1,000 on just race gas. It's, it's just nasty. It sounds pissed. Yeah, I love it. that's awesome. I cannot. You can say anything. One thing about the truck, and this is a wide open statement, but it literally looks like a forty-eight Chevy one-ton or two-ton truck ran into a Formula One car. Wow! And you ought to call. That's what you ought to call it. Pissed. Pissed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but let's do that for Mike. Let's save that for the one I have. You guys built. Pissed. Oh, love pissed. It. There you go. And how did this project come to be? Is it something you guys had thought about for a while, or is this another one the client had a kind of a wacky thought? 
Quiet yeah, kind of wacky thought. Um, <laughs> he's a big boat racer down in the Ozarks, and he had these crazy twin supercharged. I don't even know what the hell they were, but they they were twenty five hundred horse motors for his boat, and he hated them because they couldn't keep them cool. And he brought one up to us and said he wanted to build something wild with one of these motors. So Gary Regal got to work mm-hmm. and and come up with some pretty cool designs. And then we told him that we really didn't want to use that motor because if he couldn't keep it cool in the lake, he sure as hell wasn't going to keep it cool on the street with a radiator. And uh, he kind of got bummed out about that and just kind of pulled the project and said, we're not doing it. And then, believe it or not, a, about two or three years later, he come back and said, I want to do that project. And uh, and we ended up doing it. So what did yeah, he do that, with the what is that? The I motor? don't even know what he did with the other motors, yeah. but they were 48 inches from the oil pan to the top of the blowers. And this truck. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this truck, this truck only sits fifty three inches off, you know, at right height yeah. at the top of the roof. So it's like you literally would have to drive it with your head out the window. There's no other way. <laughs> okay, um, Bill, I just want to take a look at the time. I know that uh, you might yeah. be on on a schedule if you're going to have to. So Bill's going to jump off. We're going to stick here with you guys for a few more minutes. He just has a a, a heart out for another thing. Always but... a pleasure, gentlemen. Uh, yeah. I can't wait to see you. It'll be uh, it, it won't be soon enough. It's been too long. And uh, have a safe trip to SEMA, and we will see you there. Thanks, man. All right, take thanks, care. Bill. See you yes, there. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, and thanks guys. So I know we've been talking for a while, like wanting to get into some European cars and, uh, being able to do that now. And, you know, you, you've done a handful of the, of the Camaros and Mustangs now. Um, and each one is different. You guys do such a great job on them. I can see why clients would come to you and go, Hey, I want something like that, or let's do something else. Um, but is there... Is there anything on the Camaros and the Mustangs that you still haven't had a chance to do yet? Is it do you are are you clamoring more for other projects or are you looking to do another Mustang or Camaro because of something a, an engine uh, uh you know something that you haven't done yet? Well, well like your like your car that uh Fox body would be nice to do. <laughs> do the 90s cars, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard to uh, it's hard to tell the owner what he wants. You know, they come to us with something in mind, and and uh, that's usually how it starts. And it's you know, for some reason, they're great vehicles. You know, the Mustangs, Camaros, everybody likes that stuff, and it's that's they seem to want that. But uh, you know, the fact that we're doing this Rolls Royce and uh, the Austin Martin and these different vehicles is kind of exciting because it just allows you to be a little creative and, and uh, hope people like it at the end. You know, that Pantera was a fun project because that was something completely yeah. different. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's usually what the owner demands of you. And is that usually how it works? Is the owner comes to you with, with a, a project? Is there a project that you guys have in mind? Or is there some sketch you have on the wall that you're like, hopefully someday someone will come in and allow us to build this? There's well, this a particular... really... Go, Go ahead, ahead, Mike. No, there's a cool... We have a rendering with Gary on a really cool Cobra. Uh, not like a Daytona, but more like a Daytona uh, Cobra coupe. Okay. Um, that is really cool. We'd have to find the right guy, and he'd have to be short. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, my hands up. On my hands yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. So that would be fun to do because a, a lot of it's done, and that's the problem. You know, we're getting up there, and you know, these projects. When you really go to the level, like what we did with this truck, it's years. It's years of engineering, like. With this truck, we we worked with the Roadster shop and also a, a chassis designer that worked for, uh, he worked in the Indy car, he worked in Formula One a little bit, he worked with Roush, he worked at Ford, he went to MIT. So he designed 
the chassis on the 05 Ford GT. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's a local guy, smart, um, engineer, goofy type, but nice guy, but just all about numbers. And to take, you know, get all that talent and put it in a vehicle, it's uh, it takes a lot of time. It's just not something that you just start like we did in the old days and start chopping and cutting and what looks cool, keep going. It's kind of been a whole new direction with printing and scanning and um, the whole level is just, it takes another big fat wallet to continue to do this stuff. And knowing what the car is going to look like before it's done is kind of new to us. (laughs) Right. Yeah. 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 That's a good statement. I mean, when you guys, when you guys were, were really starting to, uh, to, uh, get a lot of attention at SEMA with some of the early Mustangs, the red convertible that you did back in the day. Um, you know, I don't want to say it's not – cars aren't built by hand now. They still very much are still – you know, you guys are putting in a lot of the time. But you're right. And seeing how things have advanced with scanning and 3D printing parts and trying some things out and then even just the jump to – to machining pieces, billet machine pieces, you know, that makes a huge difference. And then being able to 3D print pieces before it gets machined. I'm doing it on my 95 Ford Lightning where we're designing and 3D printing door handles and mirrors and relocating the mirror and the height and the weight and every, everything and and just doing 3D prints before we 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 go to billet with it. Uh it's interesting because now we can do several iterations of of something far less expensive, far faster, uh, and the smallest little thing. Like we fit a, a door handle on and the screw that comes in through the backside is on an angle slightly at the wrong angle and just catches right. on the sheet metal, right? You know, that's a $1,000 door handle <laughs> at a billet, right? A one-off piece. So doing it out of plastic and being able to to change it a little bit before cutting it to a little huge difference. Absolutely. To, to, to look at a screen and think it looks good, it's the right size, and then when you get it in your hands or place it on the vehicle, it's like, wow, that could be a little bigger, a little smaller, you know, or that sticks out to Absolutely right. But when you machine it ahead of time, you're just like, ah, oh, screw it. It's good enough. I've already spent all this money. I got to I gotta use it. Yeah. And, and you're right. It's a different animal when you can print it first. And, and one of the things that came up with for, for me, and this is, again, just as by no means anything huge, it's literally just a door handle, is the feel. You grab the the stock door handle and you feel a hard edge and you kind of feel it. It's not comfortable digging into your fingers and how the button presses and how we smooth out the edges and give it a curve and you know ergonomic ergonomics like makes a huge difference. But then you guys take it a step further and you start getting into carbon fiber pieces. And with carbon fiber pieces, maybe you can still three D print a few things and then try to produce a carbon. Uh, piece, you know, a mirror, a mirror cap, you know, a taillight bezels, something like that. But you guys are doing bodies now. You're doing, <laughs> you know, you're doing bodies with it. So how does that work? It has to be perfect in metal first because you can't change carbon fiber on the fly, right? It's kind of like cutting that billet aluminum. You'd have a, it'd be expensive and pain in the ass. So to do a carbon fiber car, you guys literally just have to do it all by hand in metal anyway, right? Used no. to, not anymore. Okay. We 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 mach- we have the mach- the molds or the plugs machined, so they're perfect. And then you mirror it, and uh, again, it's how far it's changed. When Jim and I first did that '65 Mustang wide body we did in carbon we did all that exactly what you said we did it all in metal and then pulled molds off of that now it's it's a we have it's better to machine it and then so yeah it's the level is just crazy and that's what we did with this truck we're doing there's a lot of machined plugs down to the seats yeah okay 
So tell us what it looks like sort of behind the scenes there over at Ring Brothers. I mean, uh, the company must have grown. you got a bunch of people. Is there a full body shop and then the custom shop? Is there the billet stuff? Is there carbon fiber stuff? How much of it all is in-house now versus still using a bunch of other vendors and partners and and whatnot? Well, we're in four different buildings now. Um, we uh, Our original shop was a, was a 5,000 square foot building and that pretty much housed everything at one point. And then we ended up building a fab shop, which was a 3000 square foot building. And then we ended up building our machine shop, which I was in at one time. And I think that's 6,000 square feet. Um, and that's right now full to the top with CNC and all of our, basically all of our parts that we manufacture. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was a building next door to us that I'm actually renting now, which is now where we assemble everything. So it basically goes from fab shop building to the body shop over to Mike. And then it comes over to this building to be assembled and wired and brought to life. So, um, and I think uh, with part timers, we're at what, 26 people here now? So, yeah. It's definitely, it's, uh, it's definitely grown over the years from, I don't know when I don't know when we first connected, yeah. maybe 10, 12, almost 13 years ago, yeah, something goes, like that. Goes there was by probably by. six or seven of us then. Yeah. Yeah, right on. Yeah, the shop has grown quite a bit. Um, the cars uh, continue to be amazing. Uh, the parts business has grown, and now the parts are available. All the billet parts are available, you know, in you know, mail letter, mail order catalogs on your website. Uh, we're starting to see um, – other really good builders around the country uh, using your parts. And for them, they're like, it looks good. It makes it easy. Like, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing it on Broncos and trucks and Fords. And, you know, I was walking around another shop in Arizona. They do great work, really kind of specialize in, in trucks. And and they're like, yeah. And then, you know, we're, for here, we use Ring Brothers door handles. We use the Ring Brothers mirrors. We use the Ring Brothers stuff. And I was like, good. Why not? The shit looks good. He's like, that's what our thought is. Is yeah. I think they've done a few things with coatings and stuff like that, uh, sure. you know, to, to personalize it, which uh, which is a great idea. But yeah. uh, we've got a we've got a really awesome uh, line of steering wheels uh, that are some of them are out, some of them are coming out. It's a it's a machine center with a, a carbon hoop. Um, it's a it's a two piece style wheel, but it's it's very you know typically billet wheels become really heavy and clumsy even to steer them. They just yeah. don't feel right. But this this wheel feels as good as it looks. It's a it's a phenomenal piece. We hope to to get it out there and and have people uh, check it out. Yeah, that sounds uh, that sounds awesome, and that's. That's actually it's interesting because billet steering wheels, uh, you know, back in the day, you'd flip open the Hot Rod magazine, you'd see the page of like 30 of those things on there. And you're like, those are 30 of the ugliest things I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> right? And, and then we started getting into – and, you know, there was a lot of cool billet wheels out there. But the billet wheel, when we're, we're doing so much to kind of modernize these cars underneath the cars and the interiors – and then you're like, okay, but billet wheel, like it doesn't, it's not doing it for me. It's like, how do we, you know, can we take something that, and and now with different coatings, we can make it kind of look cool and give it different textures and stuff. But the problem is they're still too heavy. They're just too heavy. Yeah. And uh, with this, this, this carbon wheel with the, you know, the center, uh, the carbon hoop, you know, with the machine dainty centers that. That you sky's the limit, but it's it's really a nice piece. The center horn buttons, 3D printed and stainless. Uh, the detail is just phenomenal on these wheels, and it it's uh, it's not cheap, but uh, you won't find a, a nicer wheel than the ones we are producing. Yeah. Okay. And it allows you to wrap them, and you're you're right, Matt. We we used to look at steering wheels; it was like the toughest thing. One. They were always too small. Every steering wheel out there was around 13, 48. Right. They were just too small for the car. They just looked, they were too flat. They weren't deep. You know what I mean? It, so then you had to buy the hub and everything was a little bit cheesy. Well, the hub's part of the steering wheel here. So you don't need a separate hub. They're a little larger. They look 
proportion. They're deep. You know what I mean? So they don't mm-hmm. look like a flat. You know, when people made them, it was like, well, how cheap can we make it? So it's like this flat steering wheel that's billet with a shape in it. And then they bolt a hub to it. And it just looked all wrong. Yeah, right. Yeah, we didn't say how cheap can we make it. We we <laughs> we kind of went with the route on how cool can we make it and how functional and how well can we make this wheel feel. And it's I think we I we did a great job on it. I'm excited for people to see these new wheels out. Yeah. When are those gonna be available? I think we're gonna have some of them at SEMA this year. So. Okay. We do have our first version out there. We call it the Murphy because we built that our yellow charger. I don't know if you saw it for Greg Murphy. He's a super, he was a pretty much the Dale Earnhardt of New Zealand in the, in that world. So we call it the Murph because it was the first one we made it for. And he's super cool dude. So we named it after him since his car's got the first one. Yeah. All right. It sounds good. So we've got a lot to uh, to look forward to at SEMA. Um, uh, and of course, those of you guys listening, no strangers to Ring Brothers. We talk about them a lot over here on, on the show. And uh, uh, at the SEMA show, we try to grab you guys each year, but it keeps getting busier and busier and busier. Uh, well, you guys do. SEMA a little less. <laughs> a little yeah. less busy. Um, it's going to be an interesting uh, lay of the land this year. Um, uh I believe Dodge is taking over that the GM section. Is he really? Yeah, I think Dodge is going to move there, but they're having a second booth. They're still going to have the Mopar booth, but Dodge is doing something separate than Mopar. And wow. then um, maybe it's Toyota that's going to be moving over to Ford. I'm not Ford. sure if they were going to. Yeah, yeah, I guess we'll find out when we get there. But last year was, was interesting. Um, there was definitely... At, it was interesting kind of in a good way because there was a few booths that didn't show up and those actually sort of became like rest areas, chairs and seats and high tops. And, you know, you can you can pull off of the alley uh, out of the aisle way for a second and, you know, respond to some messages or look to see where you're going, get directions without stopping in the middle of the walkway. And everyone's like, watch yourself, watch yourself, you know. Yeah. So there was there was a little bit of that, uh, which was good. Now, ultimately, this is still, you know, a business event. This is a tra- trade show. Uh, I think one of the comments um, last year was, it was cool to have the public show up on Friday. Certainly for all the builders, that's a great thing. And then to be able to take some of those cars out, excuse me, and do the seam ignited thing. But for the vendors, for the for the booths that are there, the booths are mostly designed as a trade show booth. And when you bring the public in, that would be a different sort of presentation you would make. Let's say, you know, uh, uh, you know, Edelbrock or Magnaflow going to SEMA is different than going to a good guys event. Right. Right. So uh, I, I guess they would do things a little differently if it if it was more of a public type of event. It was fun to, to see the people and and stuff, but uh, it might be missing the point. <laughs> Um, yeah. So there's uh, there's definitely some things to uh, to to learn. I think uh, both for all of us going to SEMA and for SEMA, uh, hopefully they will listen to the feedback that they get. From yeah, them. I mean, I hope they can talk to the hotels so it isn't thirty dollars for a martini for a single martini, or you know, what I mean. It's yeah, like, yeah. Well, uh, Goldberg and I started our own beverage company, so we have hard seltzers and we got some CBD seltzers coming out. So we're bringing our own shit. We're going to drink our own booze. Yeah. <laughs> I can see why. Yeah, yeah like we, we're like for all what we spend in Vegas during the SEMA, we might as well just fund our own company. So that's basically what we've been doing is uh, oh, is trying to get that off the ground. Um, all right, guys, we're I we're we're running out of time here. So what I'd love to do is. Uh, be able to catch up with you guys again uh, at the SEMA show, um, check in and uh, dig a little bit more into uh, the cars that you have there. Um, can't wait to see them. At the very least, uh, Bill and I will pop by, say hi, get a little walkthrough on your cars, and then even after SEMA, just have you back in uh, you know, uh, on Zoom in the studio here with us so we can spend a little more time on those cars. I know at SEMA when we talk, we only get like – you know, 
10 minutes to do so. But uh, we'd love to see the the cars that you guys have and then have you back on the show. Uh, I know, I imagine you guys got a lot of work to do between now and then. Yeah, you know, we always think we're going to be way ahead and we were, but, uh, you know, the interiors seem like when they get out of your hands, it's, it just sucks. Just down to the end again. That's, you know, it's interesting because that's why I was asking before. It's like, how much of the machining do you bring in house? How much of the carbon fiber do you bring in house? Because the upholstery guy, you know, the upholstery guy's like, hey, you know, uh, I need a lot of money and a lot of time. I'm like, eh, I'll give you one of those things. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're absolutely right. Nobody has money left for the interior guy and they all need it done in two weeks. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, and listen, I, I hate to be on that side of the fence too. the interior guy going, God, you know, everybody needs this done really, really quickly. There's I, and is, is it something you guys bring in house at some point? Honestly, that's a, almost a lost art in that the sewing part, you know, I think, again, with the Bond Garden, some of these guys that print all this stuff and do a great job, it still takes, you know, it still takes the guy to be able to sew straight. And yeah. we had an amazing old guy here, but he never trained anybody in his craft. And now he's gone and that craft is gone. So, you know, there's just, in Wisconsin, there's a handful. I can imagine every state's the same. So it would sure be nice, but it's hard enough keeping up with what we do. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. And uh, the schools and the and the vocational programs, the wild techs and stuff that uh, have uh, engineering programs and things like that to build cars and stuff like don't forget about upholstery, my friend. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, and you can do a lot more than just automotive interior if you master those skills. So, uh, it's something to so think about. Um, all right, we're going to have to give the studio over to another show, but um, I appreciate it, guys. Mike, Jim, the Ring Brothers. Yeah. Uh, good luck at SEMA. We can't wait to see you guys out there. It's going to be a it's going to be a fun event. If anything, it's going to be a fun event for us. Uh, I don't know if anybody's going to show up or how it's going to fan out, but I'm going to have a great time. Hopefully you guys will. Bill will be having a great time with this as well. Sounds good. good. Thank you for having having us. Thanks, guys. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, Until next time, keep the air and the spare and the bag and the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. Would you love to save money on insurance? Well, of course. Who doesn't love a good deal? Well, when it comes to great rates on insurance for everything, GEICO can help. Insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, RV, even homeowners, condo, and renters coverage. Save even more with a special discount when you bundle coverages. Plus, add the easy-to-use GEICO mobile app and 24-hour roadside assistance, and the switch to GEICO becomes a no-brainer. Switch today and see how you can save. Simply go to geico.com to get a rate quote or contact your local agent.